Hi everyone, in this second video on the Heston model, we will express the price and the variance dynamic under the risk control probability, and we will see how the implied volatility surface evolves when changing the different parameters of the model. As a reminder, in the Heston model, under the real probability P, we have the following expression for the dynamic of the asset price S and the instantaneous variance nu. Both are stochastic. The asset price follows a process close to a geometric Brownian motion with a drift mu, but its volatility, the square root of the variance nu, is stochastic as well. The model assumes that the variance follows a mean reverting coxinger solworth process and it is correlated with the asset price. Under the risk neutral probability Q, the dynamic of the asset price and its variance can be expressed as following. The drift of the asset price process becomes the risk-free interest rates R. It is similar to the Black-Scholes framework, the risk neutral probability Q is arbitrage free and under this probability, the discounted asset price is a martingale. The discounted expectation of the future price is the current price. It is assumed that the variance process has a similar expression as under the real probability P. It still follows a coxinger solworth process, but the speed of reversion and the long-term variance are not the same under the risk neutral probability Q. They can be expressed from the parameters under the real probability P with the introduction of a new parameter lambda. I will not give a demonstration in this video, you can refer to the reference article for this. To switch from the real probability P to the risk neutral probability Q for the price process, we add a drift to the Brownian motion under P equal to the difference between mu and R divided by the volatility, the square root of nu. This is the market price of risk or sharp ratio, same as in the Black Scholes model, mu minus R is the risk premium. It is positive for risk averse investors. It corresponds to the additional expected return for holding the risk. For the variance process, using the two expressions under the real and risk neutral probabilities P and Q, we easily show that we have to add a drift as well to the Brownian motion under P to switch to the risk neutral probability Q. Lambda times nu divided by xi times the square root of nu is the market price of volatility risk. Lambda is a variance premium when looking at returns rather than changes of the variance. It is positive for risk averse investor. It is the additional compensation, the additional variance return demanded for holding the volatility risk. With the two dimensional Jerzanov theorem, we can show that the risk neutral probability Q exists, but it is not unique. The market is not complete. We have two sources of risk here with the two Wiener processes, but only one asset. In practice, this is not really an issue. The risk neutral probability Q is a price probability. It is a probability used to price the asset and its derivatives. Under the probability Q, we have five unknown parameters. The initial variance nu0, the speed of reversion kappa under Q, the long-term mean of the variance theta under Q, the volatility of the variance or vol of vol xi, and the correlation of the two Wiener processes or spot vol correlation rho. We don't really care of the value of the variance premium lambda as the Heston's parameters under the risk neutral probability Q will be directly calibrated from option prices. The parameters will be chosen so that we get model prices in line or at least as close as possible to what we observe on the market. The price of a European Vanilla option is a discounted expectation of its final payoff under the risk neutral probability Q. So the price of a European call option is a discounted expectation of the maximum between zero and the difference between the asset price ST at the maturity of the option and the strike price K. The price of an option is a function of the five parameters in the Heston model. So using a set of options with different strikes Ki and time to maturity Ti, we can estimate the five parameters which will minimize the pricing error between the model prices and the market prices. We are not going to look now at pricing or calibration methods. 
We will instead play with the Heston's parameters and see how they impact the shape of the implied volatility surface. We can indeed calculate the Black-Scholes implied volatilities for different strike prices K and time to maturity T implied from option prices calculated with the Heston model and see how they evolve when we change the parameters of the model. We assume that the risk-free interest rate is equal to 5%, the time to maturity of the option is set at 0.5, the vol of vol at 50%, the spot vol correlation at 0%, the speed of reversion at 0.5, and the initial and long-term volatility, square root of the variance, at 20%. So we see on the left-hand chart that with this set of parameters, the implied volatility curve, which represents the black shows implied volatility as a function of the strike price, has a smile shape. We also represent on the right-hand chart the term structure of the implied volatility for at the money options. It is close to flat as the initial and long-term volatilities are the same here. If we increase the initial volatility level, we see that the implied volatility level increases, while the volatility term structure is now downward sloping with the initial volatility higher than the long-term one. If we increase the long-term volatility, it increases as well the volatility level on the volatility smile, but to a lower extent compared to the initial volatility as the option we consider here is more short-term with 6 months time to maturity. The volatility term structure is this time upward sloping as the long-term volatility level is higher than the initial one. The speed of reversion has a small impact on the volatility smile. On the other hand, if we increase the long-term volatility and the speed of reversion as well, we see on the term structure chart that the at the money implied volatility will increase faster with time to maturity which makes sense as the mean reversion strength will be stronger and the instantaneous variance will converge faster to its long-term average. Now, if we decrease the spot vol correlation in negative territory, the volatility smile becomes asymmetric. The implied volatility of out-of-the-money put options on the downside increases and is higher than the implied volatility on the upside of out-of-the-money call options. A negative correlation increases the tail risk on the downside with higher fluctuations when the underlying asset is going down, the volatility curve is negatively skewed in this case. If we increase the vol of vol, it increases the smile of the curve, the implied volatility of out of the money put and call options increases as a higher vol of vol increases the tail risk on both sides. The volatility smile flattens as we increase the maturity of the option. It makes sense as the log return distribution becomes more and more similar to a Gaussian distribution as the maturity increases. The instantaneous variance mean reverts. You will have periods of high volatility, periods of low volatility, but on the long run, on average, the variance will turn to the long-term average of the mean reverting process. So we have seen that the initial variance nu0 and the long-term mean of the variance theta q control the level of the implied volatility curve. They control the second moment, the variance of the underlying asset return distribution implied from option prices. The spot vol correlation rho controls the slope, the skew of the implied volatility curve. It controls the third moment, the skewness of the underlying asset return distribution implied from option prices. The vol of vol xi controls the smile of the implied volatility curve. It controls the fourth moment, the kurtosis of the return distribution implied from option prices. The cumulative variance is the integral of the instantaneous variance, and it can be shown that the expected annualized variance is given by the following formula. So we see that it is a function of the initial and the long-term mean of the variance and the speed of mean reversion, it is not a function of the vol of vol. When the long-term volatility is lower than the short-term one, the curve is downward sloping. While it is upward sloping when the long-term volatility is higher than the short-term one. And when we increase the speed of reversion, it increases the slope on the front end of the curve as the volatility will converge to its long-term average in a faster way. 
In the next videos, we will see methods to price vanilla options under the Heston model and how to calibrate parameters to option prices and to value exotic options, and we will discuss the limits of the model. Thank you for your time.